Hi, Eric here from TI, and today we're going to look at continental drift and this idea that the continents may have once been all uh, together in one supercontinent. And if you've ever looked at a world map, you can kind of get this idea that possibly, maybe, uh, the continents maybe fit together at one point in time. And, and so that makes you have to ask a question, are the continents moving? Are they moving away from one another or toward one another? And, and were all of the continents once joined together in this, this idea of the big supercontinent known as Pangaea? What evidence do we have to support that idea? These are some of the questions that a German meteorologist by the name of Alfred Wegener uh, tried to answer in the early 1900s. He proposed this idea of continental drift in which the supercontinent Pangaea split apart into the continents we have today. And by visiting various fossil dig sites, we're going to collect one type of evidence that he used to recreate Pangaea. Uh, we're going to look at fossils and compare them with uh, different parts of the world. And Alfred was not the only scientist to propose the idea of, of the continents that were joined together as a supercontinent. However, he was the first to use different kinds of evidence, such as fossils, to support this idea of a supercontinent and continental drift. And by the way, you may recall that a fossil is, is basically are the remains or imprint of an organism from the past that's been preserved in the Earth's crust. And so in this activity, we're going to explore how the locations of fossils around the world support the idea of continental drift and, and Wegener's idea of the supercontinent known as, as Pangaea. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind you that you're welcome to watch the video and stop it at any time, take notes. Uh, rewind it, obviously. Uh, if you'd like to follow along and do this activity on your own, um, or do this activity on your own, you're welcome to do so by going to our website at www.education.ti.com and downloading the software titled TI Inspire uh, CX Premium Teacher Software, or uh, just uh, teacher or student software. And then you can also use this activity on the TI Inspire CX or CX2 graphing calculator. All right, and you can find this activity known as Pangaea Fossil Puzzle at www.scienceinspired.com. All right, let's get started. All right, so we have the file titled Pangaea Fossil Puzzle opened in the TI Inspire CX Premium software. Again, you can do this activity on the software or you can use a TI Inspire CX or CX2 graphing calculator. Uh, either, either platform is fine. All right, uh, on this page, we... we Spend a little more time describing Alfred Wegener and, and, and how he proposed this idea of uh, supercontinent using fossil evidence uh, and description of what a fossil is. So if you're taking notes, you may want to pause the video and, and uh, check out this definition. A fossil is, is the remains or imprint of an organism from the past that has been preserved in the Earth's crust. And so we're going to use fossil evidence from around the world to support the idea of continental drift. So first question, I'm going to have you read this, and then uh, if you're working with um, other students uh, or even on your own, maybe maybe stop the video, pause the video, and then write down some possible answers as to why uh, similar fossils are discovered on the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa. And so the, the idea here is that you brainstorm some, some possibilities. So for example, maybe it's because the continents were all uh, together as one supercontinent a long, long time ago, but maybe there are other explanations as well. And so think about those for a second, and then come back to the video and press play. All right, so if you're back on the video, um, some of the explanations you may have thought about uh, could be, you know, maybe the uh, maybe there was a land bridge connecting the continents together that the animals could could cross. Another idea could be that animals swarm or flew across the water, uh, or maybe the fossils themselves were transported by natural or human forces. So there, there are different um, ideas that, that uh, you could think about and, and propose. And in fact, back when people weren't familiar with this, this theory of continental drift, those could have been some of the explanations that they were exploring. Maybe they had a hypothesis that you know, there was a land bridge and they're looking for evidence of that land bridge, all right? Um, in reality, we know that it's, it's uh, at least today, the evidence suggests, I should say, that uh, there was one supercontinent known as Pangaea. 
All right, on the next page, you'll find a world map with nine fossil dig sites. As you discover the fossils found at these sites, record them on your student activity sheet. Now, uh, if you don't have the student activity sheet, just go to scienceinspire.com, find Pangea Fossil Puzzle, and then you can download the PDF of the student activity sheet. It uh, has a map of the world as well as um, a table that you can record data in. All right. Let's go to the simulation and take a look at the instructions. So it says that we're supposed to select and drag the magnifying glass to a fossil dig site. When the question mark appears, release the magnifying glass to reveal the fossil. And then continue exploring the fossil dig sites until you have identified all of the fossil types. All right, well, let's see. So uh, we have South America here, and it looks like there are three uh, fossil dig sites that we'll visit today. Uh, on the west coast of Africa, there are also three fossil dig sites that we'll check out. Uh, and then along um, south uh, of Asia and India, there are a couple of sites that we're going to take a look at. And then finally, there's one site that we'll take a look at on the southern coast of Australia. We're going to grab the magnifying glass, and I'm going to start with number one. There's that question mark. Okay, and uh, fossil one looks like some kind of dinosaur. All right, so uh, we should record that. Um, you can record that on your own on a piece of paper, but I would just do it by saying, okay, uh, uh, I would say dig site one equals, uh, looks like a uh, four-legged dinosaur. All right, so I just recorded it on my paper. I'm going to jump down to fossil two just because I like going in order. Okay, it looks like we have some, some uh, smooth uh, leaves. The leaves don't have any ridges on them. Uh, and that's in uh, dig site two. Dig site one, two, and three are all on the east coast of South America. All right, so let's see, smooth sided leaves. Okay, I just wrote that down on my paper. And fossil dig site three. Okay, it's another dinosaur. I, I'm not great on my dinosaurs, but I think this one's a triceratops. So we're gonna go with that. So dig site three, triceratops. All right, that'll help me keep track. Now, uh, like I said, um, Usually I would go in order, but it looks like number four is way over here. So I'm just going to go to the west coast of Africa, and we'll start at five. Now we've seen this dinosaur before. We saw that dinosaur at dig site one on the south, uh, or I'm sorry, on the uh, east coast of South America. We've seen it again now, dig site five on the west coast of Africa. So that's interesting. So that dinosaur shows up at five. And then remember, showed up at one right here. Okay, let's see what's going on with number six. Up oh, there's that uh, Triceratops again. That's at dig site six. And we saw the Triceratops before we saw it at dig site three. So I'm making, a, on my paper, I'm making a little arrow between, a little double headed arrow between dig site three and dig site six. For the triceratops and then dig site one and dig site five uh, for the other four-legged dinosaur and then dig site seven up oh, there are those those leaves again so dig site seven we have smooth sided leaves so remember fossils can be of you know animals and insects but they can also be plants and that's what we're seeing here uh, probably the imprint of this leaf was found, uh, you know, maybe in some mud that hardened and, and became a, uh, you know, a solid fossil. So that's kind of neat. So there's a connection between dig site two and dig site seven. All right, now let's move over to dig site four. Uh, we have another leaf at dig site four, and it is a, um, has a, a, some ridges on the one side. So dig site four equals leaf with ridges. All right, have that one written down. Dig site eight is in Australia. Oh, there he is again, there's that leaf again. So dig site eight is leaf with ridges. 
So dig site eight and dig site four uh, both have the same kind of fossil showing up. And then finally, uh, dig site nine. Oh, that's interesting. That uh, smooth sided leaf shows up yet again. Um, and if you are writing this down, you'll remember that that leaf, these leaves, showed up at dig site two, which is here, dig site seven, which is there, and now they're showing up at dig site nine. So there's a connection between all of these, uh, all of these leaves. <clears throat> all right, very cool. All right, let's move on here and uh, see what we're, uh, what questions we're going to be asked here. So question two, which two continents have the most matching fossils between them? Is it South America and Africa, Africa and Eurasia, Africa and Australia, or, Af or Australia and Eurasia? And so um, using my chart that I've written down, I'm showing connections between dig site one and five, dig site three and six, dig site two and seven. So we have three connections uh, between South America and Africa. And then um, Eurasia, uh, we have, let's see, we have a connection between dig site nine and dig site seven, so there's one. And then we have a connection between dig site four and dig site eight, so there's Australia and Eurasia. So I think the answer here is clearly South America and Africa. Okay. All right, uh, question three, what do you notice about the coastlines of South America and Africa? Hmm. All right, that's an interesting question. Let's take a look. So if we look at the east side of South America and the west side of Africa, you may notice that there, there are parts of each continent that seem like they, if you, if you squeeze them together, they would fit pretty nicely. So here's this little ridge. Uh, here's another little ridge up there, and that looks like it could potentially fit in there, almost like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. So I would say that it looks pretty compelling that uh, South America and Africa could potentially fit together. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, let's see. We've got question four here. India has two fossils in common uh, with Africa, Eurasia, South America, Antarctica, North America, or Australia. Well, we never looked at Antarctica or Antar uh, Antarctica or North America, so it's got to be either uh, Africa, uh, Eurasia, South America, or Australia. So select all that apply. That usually um, means that there may be more than one answer. So uh, let's go back. I'm going to look at my notes that I took. Hopefully you're doing the same. And I saw that, um, uh, let's see. Actually, I just forgot what the question was asking. India. We're looking at India. Okay. So where is India? India is right here. Okay. So number nine. And number nine <clears throat> had um, the same fossil as dig site seven and dig site two, which was the smooth sided leaf. And so it looks like um, we could say that uh, India has uh, fossils in common with uh, Australia uh, because in, uh, India also had fossil four, which was the leaf with the uh, ridges. So those two were the same. And then number nine had the same leaf as dig site seven, which was the southern uh, part of Africa and dig site two which is the southern part of South America. So these three matched up, and then these two matched up. So India had fossils in common with Australia, Africa, and South America. So we would choose, let's see, Africa, South America, and Australia. All right, awesome. Question five, based on the fossil evidence to which continent was Australia uh, most likely connected? Well, if we go back to that map again, okay, uh, based on the fossil evidence, we saw that fossil dig site eight was a, a leaf with ridges, and the other place that had a leaf with ridges was dig site four. So that means that Australia probably at one time was connected with uh, Eurasia, Europe and Asia. So let's see, we'll go back here, and we're going to choose Eurasia. All right, question six. 
What evidence do you have that India was once connected with land masses other than Eurasia? Okay, well, we know that the fossils in India match that of, that of Australia as well as the southern half of Africa. So if you remember, India's two fossil digs, number four matched number eight, and those are both the leaf with the ridges. And then number nine matched uh, Africa and South America. So it looks as if um, India uh, had fossils that matched Australia and the southern half of Africa. So this was probably up here. This was probably up here. And then I, we can't really say for sure that it was connected to South America. South America was connected to Africa, but I, I you know, Africa is in between India and South America. Um, so it's probably going to be Africa and, and Australia would be it. All right, so that was question six. Question seven, based on your fossil evidence, how would the discovery of fossils on continents separated by miles of ocean support Wegener's continental drift hypothesis? Okay, so, uh, you know, you could stop the video here, think about it, maybe write some things down. Um, uh, and and uh, otherwise, you know, I'll take a stab at this. I would say if the characteristics of the fossils suggested that animals could not swim or fly, which we saw that with the two kinds of dinosaurs, then it would be logical to think the continents would have been connected in some way for animals to move between them. So you remember one of the possible thoughts that you may have had and, and that I um, sort of illustrated uh, as well, is that, well, instead of the continents being connected, maybe the animals could, could fly from one place to another, which we would likely see in uh, different bird species. However, uh, the two dinosaur fossils we found, there's no indication that those, either of those animals could fly. Uh, so we're gonna go with the, the possibility that um, the continents were instead connected. All right, um, so we're ruling out flying based on those, uh, those fossils. Question eight, look at the picture of fossil A. Does it look like it would be a good swimmer? <laughs> and so if you remember, I think fossil A was, was here. Yeah, or fossil one rather. Uh, so, no, <laughs> no, there's no indication here that, that this dinosaur could, could fly. Or I'm sorry, uh, swim, um, same thing. I, it doesn't, there's no indication that it can necessarily, uh, swim. So we're going to say no. Um, and then number nine, look at the picture of fossil B. Does it look like it could be a good swimmer? And if you remember right, uh, I think fossil B was that other kind of dinosaur. I think we saw it here. Yeah, the Triceratops. So there's nothing there that looks like Triceratops could uh, could swim across an ocean uh, to get to the other shore. So we're going to say no to that as well. Didn't have any fins. Uh, there's no no. Although they do have tails, and I guess maybe those tails could be used to to swim. They're also they're massive dinosaurs, and um, their feet definitely aren't built for uh, for swimming. There's no webbing, um, so it's unlikely that they'd be good swimmers. Question 10, why would the fossil of an ocean fish found on two different continents not be good evidence of continental drift? Well, I mean, obviously, you, you know, it's, it's easy to, to think about this one. If it's an ocean swimmer, an ocean fish rather, it means it can swim from one place to another. Uh, clearly, it's not going to be a... Um, uh, a land dwelling animal so it's it would be hard to use that as evidence to suggest continental drift just because you know they can swim from one shore the shore of Africa potentially to the shore of South America so that doesn't really give us the evidence that we need all right uh, that's the end of this particular activity um, please check back for more on our YouTube channel it's TI calculators all one word and we'll do some more of these uh, videos for you and hope this was helpful and have a great day. Thank you.